What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be testing out the Ross Racing Heat Shield for the B58 engine. This is a simple but effective mod that claims to lower intake temps by keeping the heat away from the intake system. But does it actually work? I've got some equipment to measure temperatures and we're about to find out. So first I'm going to get some baseline temperatures. So the car's been sitting for a while and the intake is at 111 degrees approximately. The actual intake pipe is at 122 degrees. And then the back of the intake is around 125, 127 degrees. My catch can is around 150, 145 degrees. And then the turbo. The turbo itself is roughly around 230 to 220 degrees, somewhere in between. I'm also going to be using temperature probes to get the temperature while I'm in the car. So I've got two probes. One is going to be right over the turbo right here. And then I've got one shoved behind the intake. And it connects wirelessly to this and now we can check the temperature while we're in the car. Alright, looks like it's working. The top number is by the turbo and the bottom number is by the intake. So for this test, I'm going to be driving the same route back to back. I'm just going to do some regular driving and then I'm also going to do a couple fourth gear pulls and then we're going to see the before and after temperature and then I'll go ahead and install the heat shield and we'll check the temperatures after that. So just driving around without the heat shield, the lowest temperature I got was 75 by the turbo and 58 by that intake. Now let's go ahead and do some pulls. Basically when you're driving around and the air is flowing over everything, the temperatures usually drop, but when you come to a stop, the temperatures start to rise. So right before the pull, we're at 91 and 64. And right after the pull, we peaked at 108 by the turbo and then the temperature by the intake is lower at 61. Okay, for our next pull, we're at 161. And since this was a shorter pull, we only peaked at 106 and the intake temperature is still at 61. For this last test, I've been driving around a little bit and then I'm going to come to a complete stop and wait a minute and see how much the temperatures rise by. So starting at 84 and 58, let's see where it goes. And we're at 136 and 84. All right, let's take a look at the temperature. So the intake is at around 113, 110, around there. The back of the intake is roughly around 104, 105. The intake pipe is at 82, 83 degrees. The turbo, that's at three, 530, 540 degrees. And then lastly, the catch can. 150 and 160 degrees. Now let's go ahead and install the heat shield and get some new numbers. So the heat shield install itself is pretty simple. Uh, you just take off the four bolts that are holding it in. You disconnect the O2 sensors and then you can just pull the whole thing out. And this is where you have the four bolts. You'll be able to see them on the car, just take them out. And to install the heat shield, you just put those four bolts back in and you line it up. All right, I got the heat shield in. Uh, it's just those four bolts and then you install it and then I would recommend you let the car cool down but I didn't just for this test so getting some new temperatures uh, the intake is at 80 the back of the intake is at 87 the intake pipe is at 94 and then since we just installed the heat shield it's only 135 and the catch cans at 105 let's go do our test so driving around, the lowest temperatures I was able to get was 69 and 56, and now let's go do some pulls. So before the pull, we're sitting at 88 and 65 degrees. And 
and after the pull we got to around 101 and 60 degrees. Now before our second pull we're sitting at 91 and 59 degrees. And after the pull we're sitting at 97 and 59 degrees. Now after driving around, let's come to a stop and see how much the temperature has increased. This time we're starting at 69 and 56 degrees. So even though it's been a minute, I'm going to let it go just to see how much it increases. So starting at the intake, we're at 96, 97 degrees, 96, 97 and the back of the intake is at around 88, 87 degrees. The intake pipe itself is at 83, 84 degrees. The catch can, wow that's much lower, 105 degrees up to 107. And the heat shield is much cooler. It's at 250 to 260 degrees. And before, if you stuck your hand in here, you could actually feel the heat radiating, but it's much cooler now. All right, let's start looking at the results. So these are the engine bay temps. Here are the temperatures without a heat shield. And then here's the temperatures with the heat shield. So as you can see, we got lower temperatures across the board. So the intake filter was around 14 degrees cooler, the intake panel uh, was around 15 degrees cooler, and then the turbo, since there's a heat shield covering it, it's around 285 degrees cooler. And the catch can was around 49 degrees cooler. The only thing that didn't go down is the intake pipe, and I would say this is honestly almost about equal. I think if we ran the test again, this number might have been lower or higher. And now looking at the standstill temperature test, this is where we parked the car and saw the temperature on the temperature probes. Uh, you can see with the heat shield, the starting temperature was much lower at 56 and 69 degree by the turbo. And uh, with the stock no heat shield, it was around 84 and 58. And then after a minute, the stock temperature was around 136 and the intake temperature was around 84 and then with the heat shield it was 120 and the intake temperature is 68 degrees so you can see that we started off at a lower temperature and then it also didn't increase as much so lastly we're going to look at the temperature during the pulls uh, so again this top number is going to be the temperature by the turbo and this is going to be the temperature by the intake uh, so you can see starting off without the heat shield for the fourth to fifth gear pull uh, we were at 91.64, but after with the heat chill, we're at 88.65, and then at the end it was 108.61, and then 101.60. So you could see that across both these poles, the the temperatures with the heat shield were much lower. Lastly, I wanted to talk about the IATs. So we got the fourth, fifth gear poles right here, and the fourth gear pole right here. So in both of these graphs, the orange line is going to be the Ross Racing heat shield, and the blue line is going to be stock. So as you can see, I didn't notice that big of a difference with IATs. Uh, I mean, the Ross Racing did start off with lower IATs here, but they increased about the same. And I think it's down to the fact that I'm still in the stock manifold with a hybrid turbo running 33 pounds of boost. I think if I had an aftermarket intake, the difference would be much bigger. But as of right now, I think the IATs are the same. I think the biggest limiting factor is the manifold itself. But as you saw, the engine bay temperatures are much lower, so I think the heat shield definitely makes a big difference. Uh, if I had a better manifold, I think that would show. So does the Ross Racing heat shield work? Based on the numbers, I'd say yes. We're seeing real temperature reductions, which means the intake is pulling in cooler air. It's a cheap, easy mod that actually does what it claims. If you're running an open intake on your B58, this might be a solid upgrade to keep the temps in check. Let me know what you think in the comments, worth it or not. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe for more B58 content.